Somebody try to hack me. Or to be more specific, somebody try to hack my website, hacksmarter.org. Now, if you've never been there, that's where you can get access to like YouTube, Discord, all of that good stuff. But it's just a static website hosted in an S3 bucket. Now, let me explain my terms just a little bit because I know you might be a little bit lost right now. My website is hosted in something called AWS or Amazon Web Services. It is a cloud provider. There's kind of three major players in the cloud space. You have AWS, GCP by Google, and Azure by Microsoft. My website used to be hosted by WordPress, but I realized I could save a bunch of money hosting the website myself in AWS. Specifically, it generally only cost me a few dollars a month. Well, something happened tonight. I received a billing alert notification to my email, which by the way, if you have an Amazon account, even if you just use it for sandbox purposes, you should set up billing alerts. Well, I have a billing alert set up so it notifies me anytime my account goes over $10, which never happens. Well, I received a billing alert that my account hit $20 out of nowhere today. And let me show you what I found. I logged into my Amazon account and I'll share my screen. And when I logged in, I immediately noticed this. Now, even if you're new to this world, you can see something is out of the ordinary. If you look at my cost right here, you can see my cost for previous months, right? Like if we go... If we go over to September, you can see just a few dollars, October, just a few dollars, November, just a few dollars, and then December, we have quite a bit more money out of nowhere. So there's an anomaly going on, and thankfully my billing alert notified me, and I began to do some digging. So you can see it's all coming from CloudFront. So then I was like, okay, CloudFront is what sits in front of uh, hacksmarter.org to manage all the different requests. So let's go over and look at CloudFront and see if we can figure out what's going on here. So over in CloudFront, I have my CloudFront distribution here. And if we click that, we can go down here. And for example, we can look at usage. And now when we look at usage, we can just change this. We'll say last 24 hours, click apply. And actually let's change it to popular objects. I think that gives it a little more clarity. So we'll change this once again to last 24 hours. And I want you to notice this. I. I'm not as famous as this makes me out to be. Notice within the past 24 hours, the website was hit to over 26 million times. Not only that, but if we go over here, it took 60 gigabytes from the website. Once again, just a static website hosted in the S3 website or S3 bucket. I mean, you can't even like hack the website. There's no server side code. You can't get RCE. It's quite literally impossible. But what you could do is DDoS the website. Now, if you've never heard of a DDoS attack, that's a distributed denial of service. It's often known with the botnet where a bunch of servers that have been compromised by a threat actor, they can take their botnet and attack a specific web server. In this case, they attacked hacksmarter.org. Now, the reason this is effective on their end is I didn't have anything in place to defend against this type of attack. Now, when I set up hacksmarter.org and AWS, I figured, look, I'm like a small YouTuber. We have a small community. I don't really need a bunch of security features in my website, right? Like the hacker isn't going to get hacked, right? Well, wrong. I don't know why someone thought my website was a target, but they did. And they identified a juicy target, at least at costing me $20 in a short period of time until I discovered what was going on because I didn't have anything enabled. I had CloudFront in front of the website or in front of the S3 bucket, but that's it. I didn't have a WAF enabled. Now, a WAF is a web application firewall. This is a mechanism that can sit and look at each request coming to your website and say, hey, this request is allowed and this request is blocked. So what I ended up doing was enabling a WAF and I wanna show you how I did this. So let me jump back over to here and I'll show you exactly what we did. If we jump back over to CloudFront here, we can click my distribution there for hacksmarter.org. And if we go over to security right here, and from security, you can see I have this WAF, Hack Smarter Protection, and we can click that. This is what I set up in order to protect my website. Now, it's already blocked multiple requests, but also in the future. You can see right now, it's already blocked 56 requests. We have 17 requests that were allowed, and it's blocking requests based on a set of rules. So if we go over to rules right here, we have these different rules that are set up. A lot of these rules are built in by Amazon, and they're free to apply up to, I think, like a million requests or along those lines. And so I can just show you these rules. If we go over to this one, we have this AWS managed rules, Amazon IP reputation list. 
This script contains rules that are based on Amazon threat intelligence. This is useful if you'd like to block sources associated with bots or other threats. So that's one of the rules I applied. But if you have your own website, or if you want to figure out how to do this, if we go back over to our ACL here, and we go to rules again, we can add rules over on the right side. So if I click add manage rule groups, this is what I ended up doing. So there's a bunch of different rule groups you can choose from, but a lot of them cost a monthly rate, which I don't feel like paying money per month for once again, a static website, no authentication, nothing enabled that way. But here on the AWS manage rule groups, and I'll zoom in so you all can see it, if we scroll down, here are some free rule groups. So I added the Amazon IP reputation list. I added the anonymous IP list. I had a core rule suit rule set. This provides pressure against exploitation of wide range of vulnerabilities, including those described in OWASP. I added known bad inputs and some rule a few rules along that. I also noticed a lot of the IPs were coming from China. And so I added a custom rule to block IPs from China as well as other countries that can be notorious for botnets. And I'll show that to you. And by the way, if you live in one of these countries, I apologize. Let me know and I can adjust this a little bit. But if we go over to rules here, I have my block countries rule. And if we click into my block country rule and we go to edit, we can see what it's doing right now. So it's blocking these countries because according to ChatGPT, these are the countries where a lot of botnets come from. And I can affirm China and Russia where a lot of the IPs of the 26 million IPs hitting hacksmurder.org. So what this does, it says, hey, if your IP is located in one of these countries, it's gonna be blocked. You're not gonna be allowed to hit or access the website processing the rules that way. So this is interesting. I had to play the blue team and generally I'm a pen tester and I hack stuff. I even do AWS pen testing, but I didn't secure my own AWS website because I assumed, hey, I'm small, nothing's actually going to happen. And that was a failure on my part. So here are some takeaways. Number one, you can be hacked. Like your website can be taken down or attempt to be taken down by a DDoS attack. If your website doesn't go down, it might cost you a bunch of money. One takeaway is make sure you enable billing alerts in AWS or Azure or GCP or really whatever cloud environment you have. All of them allow you to do billing alerts. So when you reach a certain a protocol, a certain limit in your billing alert, you'll receive an email. That's the only reason I discovered this was the billing alert showed me, hey, there's some anonymous behavior going on in my AWS account and specifically with hacksmarter.org. The second thing is, hey, the WAF is virtually free in Amazon. There is a small cost to it per month, but all of those rule sets that you saw are free. You can make your custom rules to block IPs and a bunch of other powerful things that you're able to do there. I encourage you to dig into it. If you wanna be a cloud engineer or do AWS pen testing, it's important to know not only how to hack stuff, which is what we focus on as pen testers, but you need to know how to secure stuff. And then finally, I just want to say kudos to all of you working on the blue team. The blue team is way more stressful. I mean, I saw this as I was getting my kids ready for bed and I got them to bed and like ran downstairs, pulled up Amazon to figure out what was going on. And like my heart was beating. It is stressful doing incident response, even personally, and doing that for a large organization where, hey, instead of $20, it might be $20,000, that is a big deal. So kudos and shout out to everyone on the blue team. And for those of you on the red team, you need to know how to be a blue teamer. A client might ask you, hey, we have this going on in our website. How can we stop it from happening? If you don't have experience with blue team and know how to do this yourself, they're going to be confused and you're not going to be a very good security consultant. So if you want to be a red teamer, learn how to do blue teaming. And if you're a blue teamer, also understand the red team side of things. So you know how a threat actor or a hacker thinks so you can stop them in their tracks. So, hey, y'all, I just want to throw this video together real quick as I'm continuing to dig into this. Hopefully you found this interesting. Let me know in the comments your thoughts or maybe some additional security I should add to my website hosted in AWS behind CloudFront. So hey y'all, thank you for watching. I will catch you in the next one.